my name is Michael Bates. I'm a British walker and politician. Since 2011, along with my wife Sherlyn, we've walked some 14,000 kilometers through 25 countries in the name of friendship and in support of charity. Sherlyn was born and raised in China and together we want to tell the story of the country's rich history and culture through the people and places we encounter along the way. We'll be joined by friends and local volunteers and together we hope to discover the very ancient and very modern faces of China. For this our ninth walk together, Shirley and I will be heading through Zhejiang province. Zhejiang is located just south of Shanghai. It's about the size of England and a similar population too of around 55 million people. Historically, it's been known as a center for tea, silk and pearl production. But today, its thriving economy is based on technology, trade and tourism, making it one of the most prosperous provinces in all China. Starting in the stunning city of Hangzhou, where Shirling grew up, we'll walk 500 kilometers all the way to Wenzhou on the southeastern coast. But first, we rejoin our walking route at Zhuji City, heading in the direction of Yu City. Now, much of our walk is along rather noisy grey motorways. So it's a joy to finally reach the countryside and to hit our first 100 kilometers. Yeah. 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 Now when I see 100 kilometers, all I'm thinking is 400 kilometers. <laughs> One of our walking companions, Madame Wu, suggested we took a detour into an old town called Anwa. We went down the narrow streets and met a remarkable lady called Auntie. She was making what looks like crispy Chinese pizza. It's very popular with the locals, especially the children. Oh, wow, that's really nice. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, yeah, very hot. Oh. <laughs> Does she think she can teach me? And, and then this goes. Oh, yeah. Can I can I feel in there just a bit? <laughs> uh, I make you a meal. Oh, thank you so much. We'll never forget this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Come here. Thank Well done, team. Uh, we now here. It's the 25th. Full of pizza, we head to the local B&B for the night and to relax and eat watermelon and enjoy a glorious sunset. We're really excited about it. We're on schedule at the moment, 120 kilometers. It's forecast to reach nearly 40 degrees today, uh, but the prize is to get to Ewu. Can't resist the temptation to pick our own grapes. I thought I cut the string. There we go.
And finally, we reach the outskirts of Ewood, a city born of free trade, and another warm welcome gratefully received. From the outskirts of Iwu, we head to its beating heart, Iwu's small commodity wholesale market, covering an area of 600,000 square meters over five floors. It's the biggest marketplace in the world for anything and everything in small consumable goods. So we're going to find out. How very good to see you. Well, welcome. There are 1.8 million different products on sale here from 200,000 suppliers, and they're exported to 210 countries around the world. It's staggering to think that so many of the goods bought on British high streets begin their journey here in Iwu. It was a special visit for Sherlyn too, because for many years she ran an export-import business and visited Iwu 25 years ago. Then it was just a few hundred outdoor stores. Today, it is this vast global market. It's five kilometers long, five floors, a one-stop shop for gift retailers from all over the world. It's also where most of Britain and America's Christmases are made. These appeal to any parent because uh, what it means is they come with the lights on them as opposed to you having to get unwind the lights, find out the bulbs that don't work, <laughs> put it round. This is the perfect answer. Yes. A ready-made tree with lights. Yes. What specialisation is doing is this Christmas tree guy will be, first of all, he'll be driving down the cost because he'll be buying more of them and therefore he'll be able to reduce the cost. If every part of the economy and the market does what he does, drive down costs, improve quality, then that is what creates wealth. That's the queen of trade. International trade city Iwu, which we just visited, is an amazing place. 70,000 businesses, exports to 210 countries around the world, but 80% of Christmas decorations come from this very trading center. So when you're climbing into the loft for the annual pilgrimage, you're pulling out the lights and the tinsel to celebrate your Christmas celebration, remember that their journey began here in Ewood. Traditional Chinese medicine has evolved over thousands of years. Practitioners use a variety of mind and body practices such as acupuncture, tai chi, as well as herbal products to address health problems. We've been invited to a place that farms and produces the herbs that go into those medicines. Welcome to Senshan. Oh yes, can I, can I stand up? Um, I just want to see. Oh yes, I can, I can, yes, it's much stronger. Now,它经过导药和那药年粉碎以后,基本要粉成这么细的细粉,然后呢,对,这是混合起来粉碎好的细粉。嗯,嗯,很有药香味。这个功效,咱们的香囊有提神醒脑的。Very similar, maybe in, in your countries or in foreign yeah. countries, yeah. there are some essential, essential oils yeah. like yeah. lavender or some yes. rose. Yes, lavender. Very similar, yeah. uh, very lavender popular. or yeah. rose, yeah. yes. Very similar to this kind of usage yeah. because they can be... Yeah. They will, soothing. Yes, yeah, soothing or relaxing yeah. or maybe can prevent you from getting a cold. Yeah. Different kind I of love uses. lavender, the smell yeah. of lavender. Yeah. Yeah. And there's even a traditional Chinese medicine doctor on hand to analyze my walker's ailments. Once get out of some of this wetly, and uh, uh, then it will just like 
make the circulation more smoothly because at the moment there's a blockage. I think the worst part of the treatment was the diagnosis in which uh, I seemed to have everything that was possibly wrong was wrong with me. Uh, and, but the treatment uh, that it began with these pots uh, was initially very uncomfortable but then over minutes it actually became quite nice. A bit like diving into cold sea and the initial shock and then actually it becomes quite pleasant. After the diagnosis, what I've been told is that my body has too much yin and not enough yang. And the objective is to actually get those two components in balance. The afternoon gets us back on our walk and the final few kilometres taking us into Iru and our rest for tonight. Well, we're starting here from the point where we finished a little bit earlier uh, yesterday and uh, we've got about 13 kilometers to go in the center of Iwu. Chun and I are passionate about this kid. Not only because it's an area of culture in which there are very strong UK China ties, but also because education provides the surest route out of poverty and towards prosperity that's ever been invented. The invitation, therefore, to Wangguan International School was a joy not just because of the high standards, but also because of the passion, creativity and enthusiasm of teachers and students. I have to confess, I was once a bit of a train spotter in my youth. I love trains, so I'm particularly excited about this morning's visit. In 2017, Shirley and I met the first ever train from Iwu to Barking in London on its arrival. Today, we're at the other end of that 13,000 kilometre journey in Iwu to find out more about that train, its journey and its future. I'm here at the Iwu International Cargo Train Terminal and this is an important part of the One Belt, One Road initiative. We're looking forward to finding out more about this long journey, especially to London. Uh, this is a route map of Iwu Xinjiang Europe cargo. The Belt Road Initiative is an ambitious long-term Chinese vision for improving the connectivity in trade across the continents of Asia, Africa and Europe. The Xinjiang Europe cargo train across the Asian and European continents has played a role of the camel team of the new Silk Road. Yiwu Xinjiang Europe cargo train has brought pounds of Chinese traditional commodities to the European countries. Nigel, you've been doing import-exports to the UK from yeah. Iwu yeah. for many years here. Yeah. Um, how long does it take to get goods to London or to Felixstowe by train from Iwu? Okay, by train it usually takes around 17 to 20 days okay. to, get to, uh, to get to London. Um, by sea, it uh, can take four to five weeks. So uh, there's a big so difference. The big difference, but presumably it's more expensive to send it by train. It's, it's more expensive, but um, for example, if we're uh, shipping seasonal goods and there's a problem with production and we miss the sea shipping deadline, we can then use the train as a buffer to catch up the deadline so we can meet the deadline still. So this is a great new opening for trade oh, uh, to Europe and to the UK. It, it's great. It's great for us. We watch the enormous cargo freight cranes towering above us as we walk through the steel and iron corridors. A train bound for Madrid, the most popular route, is loaded and ready to leave. There are two trains a day, making the 13,000 kilometer journey from Iwu to Spain, which is officially the world's longest rail link. It costs about 5,000 US dollars to send a container, which is more than the cost of sea freight, but then it's quicker too. It's an incredible logistical operation, fast and speedy as containers are shipped across the world. But it's important to remember that this vast operation is only one part of China's vision for one belt, one road, connecting the world to places like Iwu. You've all 
heard of Hollywood, and many of you will have heard of Bollywood. But have you heard of Chinawood? Shirley and I love the movies. So we're off to visit Hengdian World Film Studios. The aptly named Chinawood Studios are the largest outdoor film studios in the world, with the majority of Chinese TV series and films produced right here. Before heading to the main event, we have a tip-off that a hospital drama is being filmed in an actual hospital. So we decide to stop by to find out more. There's this one bit of culture that unites all people. It's a love of a hospital drama. And we're here today to see one of the most popular hospital dramas in China. It's all very tense and serious backstage, lots of nervous actors. from serving film and TV crews, it also welcomes tourists to walk the film sets and experience the architecture across thousands of years of Chinese history, including a full-size replica of the Forbidden City in Beijing. Question, if you need the Forbidden City in your movie and you don't have one, probably in the West you'd go for computer graphics uh, or a little bit of painted board, but here in China, they reproduce it on lifetime scale, one to one, complete with its own football pitch. <laughs> we get a sneak preview of one of the ancient dramas being filmed and get to chat with some of the young stars. You're the mother of three of the young stars of this movie. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? How did they get into the movie business? You know, just a chance. We, we just know this film and uh, we, we joined the competition and uh, she get the leading, uh, la leading lady. Leading lady? Yes. yes, in this film. You're leading lady at the age of how old? Uh, 11. 11? 11, wow. Wow. And would you like to do this uh, going forward in the future? Would you like to be a movie actress. Um, yeah, I like it. Yes. Uh, you like it? In the morning, we accept an invite from local friends to visit Jinhua Wu Theatre to watch the rehearsal of a scene from an old opera called Golden Monkey Spring. Hi, very good to see you, Hello. Michael Bates. How wonderful. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's a, a fantastic uh, tradition to, to keep alive. Do they find that, uh, that young people are as interested in the local opera as, uh, as the older people? Because After watching rehearsals, I feel the urge to take part, and I can't resist the opportunity to address an enormous and mercifully empty theatre with some well-known lines from Shakespeare. The whole world's a stage, and all men and women are merely actors upon it. They have their entrances, and they have their exits. And in each lifetime, each man may play many different roles. Outside we come across an elegant group performing the ancient art of Tai Chi, 
People who practice Tai Chi often aim of achieving physical and mental harmony. And in the spirit of audience participation, I decided to have a go without much success. Could you, could you teach me one or two yeah. basic moves? <laughs> 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 Uh, Debussy, Debussy, Debussy. I think I better leave it to the ladies to, yeah. to do. And okay. I'll stick to walking. The final day of walking from Jinwa to Yongkan. And the heavens open, giving us some welcome rain and a break from the heat and humidity. Being from England, I know all about the rain, and so it's um, the one thing about this walk is it doesn't seem to know um, the idea of harmony and balance. It's either 39 degrees uh, blistering heat, uh, or it's pouring with rain, and there's nothing in between. But who knows? We're only halfway. It might balance out. The yin and the yang of the weather might be in harmony as we go to Wenzhou. Two, four, one, point four, two. Uh, Next time, we'll be having tea with the gods in Panan. We'll visit the picture-perfect painter's town of Guian and explore the curious relationship between rice and fish in the hills of Jingtian.